Hey guys, welcome back. My last video I made, I talked to you guys about things that I don't buy at the store and prefer to make at home for multiple reasons. Ingredients, saving money, just the pure joy of it. And in that video, I mentioned this video, which I'm very thrilled for. This is OG Sarah. I'm gonna share with you guys things I do not own or have in my kitchen or kitchen space, and I'm gonna tell you why. For me, the kitchen is the number one place in my home that needs to stay on top of things. It needs to be organized, it needs to be easy to clean, and it needs to be easy to maintain. If I notice that I'm not able to do those things easily, I have too much clutter and need to minimize and minimalize what I have. So as I go about the kitchen here and just get a few things done, I'm gonna share with you guys a bunch of things that I do not own as a homemaker in this kitchen. There are definitely some appliances I do not own, and I honestly like not owning them. And the first one is a pressure cooker. I have used one in the past, I have borrowed it. I highly recommend if there's an item you are thinking of getting but not too sure. If you can borrow it from someone, I just realized I'm not wearing my rings and this feels really weird. <laughs> if you can borrow it from someone, do it. It's pretty much just a test run. See if you actually like it. I've tried a pressure cooker and it's not my thing. I feel like a pressure cooker for some people is like a saving grace item, but if you're like me and you just so happen to use regular pots on your stove, maybe you have a crock pot, that's actually something I don't own either, believe it or not. I used to own a crock pot and then I gave it away to someone because I felt like I just wasn't using it enough. To be honest, in this stage of my life, I've been thinking, oh, it'd be really nice to actually have a crock pot. So maybe that's something I will buy, but pressure cooker, crock pot, and even an air fryer, I do not own. The reason for an air fryer is I believe a lot of people kind of went that route because they didn't want to fry things in oil, but I like the oils that we use. We use avocado oil, we use lard, we use olive oil. These are oils that my body likes and my kids and my husband's body likes, and I don't mind using them because your body does need fat. <laughs> Something else I do not own, and this is recent, is plastic cutting board. For years, I've had people telling me to get rid of my plastic, my plastic, my plastic cutting boards, and I just couldn't. I just, you know what? Here's the thing, this is my thing. Sometimes I find myself in emotional places and spaces where I can't do things, even though I know it's the right thing to do. So with our plastic cutting boards, they were just so often used and I didn't have anything in my mind to swap that out yet, even if it was simple and it was. I was literally able to swap it out with something I already own. So I got rid of all of our, we had like eight plastic cutting boards and now I just have this. This is actually uh, something my dad made years ago. This is a childhood chopping block. It's wood and we do all of our cutting on here. This is our only cutting board and it is always on the counter because it is used that often. And then if we have to cut things like um, raw meat or chicken, we have a ceramic plate that's quite wide and easy to wash and is not porous. So it doesn't soak up things like uh, a wood cutting board. Wood? The whole idea of the plastic cutting board and getting rid of them was, for me, I was honestly, I was so annoyed by washing them constantly and um, I was noticing plastic coming off of them and going into our food and that is something I just wasn't really comfortable with. So not having plastic cutting boards has really opened up our dishwasher space at the end of the night because this is a wooden cutting board that you would never put in the dishwasher nor would it fit. And this is just convenient and honestly beautiful. I have to make buns. That's what I have to do, I'm gonna make buns. A big thank you to Haya for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Picking a vitamin for your child means you are already having it in your head that you want your child to have better health, increased energy, a good functioning brain, strong immune system, etc. But you go to your local store and you just pick up a random children's vitamin off the shelf and you don't realize what's actually inside it. Maybe you decide to look closer at the label and you see it's actually filled with a lot of artificial colors, flavors, excessive amounts of sugar, and just a whole lot of gummy gunk. That's why Haya was created. A pediatrician approved chewable vitamin that is picky eater friendly. We've been using Haya for months now and my kids always ask for them every single day. They taste that good and I have had them before as well because they really do taste that good. Haya is formulated with fruits and veggies, no added sugar, plus 15 essential vitamins and minerals. It's non-GMO, vegan, dairy-free, gluten-free, peanut-free, allergen-free, and 
everything else you can think of. I'm also a mom of five and I'm busy and Haya is not only awesome for my kids but extremely convenient for me. For your first month, you get a glass refillable bottle with your vitamins and then every month after, they're going to send you this. A non-plastic vitamin refill pouch that you just pop into the bottle and you're ready to go. Haya is simple, convenient, and an easy way for me as a parent to take a little bit more charge into my children's health. To take 50% off your first order, go to HayaHealth.com forward slash Sarah Therese, or of course I made it easy for you and you can click the link in the description. This is an interesting one because I get questions about it. We do not own an extra fridge or freezer. Um, outside of our kitchen. The only fridge and freezer we have is right here and it houses everything that we need. All of our food, all of our condiments. What's really convenient is that it has a flex drawer and you can put a lot of stuff in here. This is where we put like cheese and eggs and then our freezer. It's all of our meat, it's all of our uh, frozen fruits and vegetables. We have never overfilled this. I have never gone beyond what this can take. And that's pretty good for a family of seven. I'm also not a huge stock up person when it comes to things like meats and such. I'm not someone that goes out to buy a cow, nor do I live on a farm, but I shop kind of by need. I'll do mild stock ups, but nothing really crazy. That's not to say that we would never get a fridge or freezer, like a secondary one one day. I also know that we have, sure, five kids, but they're small kids. It's not like they eat a ton of food. I remember growing up and my brothers would chow down on like three or four chicken breasts for dinner alone. So my mom had to have secondary storage space for like so much food. <laughs> but for this point in our lives where we're at right now, I don't need it. And that's another thing with minimalism, it's seeing where you need to change. So I'm not holding on to certain aspects of minimalism because I want to be here, but it's seeing where I'm at in my life right now, how it benefits me now, and then opening myself up later to seeing if it could benefit me then. Minimalism for me is not something that ties me down, it's something that is extremely flexible with me and just the way that I raise my kids and um, help my family. Okay, this is a good one, and I've talked about it so many times before previously when I really talked into minimalism, but it's multiples. I don't have multiple water bottles. I have one, Kieran has one. I have one to-go cup, he has one to-go cup. We don't have multiples of the same item, for example. Hold on, hold on. We don't have multiples of the same size pot. So we have a huge one, kind of a medium-sized one. We have this small one that was given to us. These are our place pots. They're a little bit different and these are so convenient for cooking certain things. Pastas, pierogies, these are just beautiful. So yeah, I have four pots. I have this, it's my uh, Staub oven. I only need one. I know there's tons of people that have multiple types of these things or Staubs, but I really only use it one at a time. So I don't need multiple. And then of course, my cast iron skillets, I have just two and a big one and a small one. The big one I thrifted for like $15. And then on the stove, I have like a non-stick safe pan. That's also from our place. And yes, there are some days where I have all those things kind of going at once because <laughs> I'm making lots of food or lots of different types of food. So like, it's, sometimes it's a little squishy, but I don't want to have so many pots and pans that I can't store them well, that I can't access them well, that I can't take care of them well. Even knives, our main knives are in our knife block and those are practically our cutting knives. Even cookie sheets, I don't have multiples of the same kind of cookie sheet unless I use them at the same time. And that's how I kind of was starting to go through things. There's nothing wrong with having multiples, but for me, it felt really cluttered when I realized that I had so many multiples that I wasn't even getting through them. It's almost like a wardrobe that's just too full of clothes and not all the clothes are worn to their full potential or worn the amount that they should have been worn due to their make. That's kind of how I feel about multiples in the kitchen. So I'm not against them, but I've hugely pulled down items that I own in the same category because most of the time I just use them once at a time. I'm just pulling up my recipe for quick sourdough burger buns. I'm actually going to do these as pulled chicken sandwiches. <gasps> 
with homemade sauerkraut and pickles. Ah. Another thing I don't own is a food processor. I know that people that own food processors really truly enjoy them, but I own a blender and I know they do kind of different things, but I find if I'm in need of a food processor kind of technique, I can either do it by hand or do it by hand and use the blender or use my mandolin. I also don't own sponges. <laughs> Which is like, okay, whatever, but I feel like this is something that needs to be said. I used to buy a new sponge every two weeks. I went through sponges like crazy and now, kind of gross, but I use these scrubbers. <laughs> They're amazing. They will last you forever and what I do is throw them in the washing machine or the dishwasher when I need them to be washed. They never stink. They always work so well and they are so scrubby, but do not scrub like your non-stick stuff to the point where it's scratching it. I really recommend them. Sponges for me, they just had such a short life and just smelt so bad. And um, I also know that they could carry a lot of stuff that wasn't good and then you can't wash them properly. These ones are the complete opposite and they're amazing. If you go into the description box, they're in my Amazon storefront, I think under cleaning or kitchen. Need some butter. Something else I don't own, which is totally like anti-homemaker. Well, not anti-homemaker, but I feel like I know a lot of people that have this and it is a stand mixer. I don't want a stand mixer, to be honest. I don't think I would ever want a stand mixer. They don't interest me at all. The only thing I would use it for would be bread but I have my bread machine, which does so much more for me than a stand mixer. And I have a hand blender, I have a hand beater, and my bread machine can do everything from bread to jams to yogurt to even cookie dough. So I just feel like a stand mixer, it wouldn't serve me very well. Maybe you don't, maybe you have a stand mixer and you don't, but when I go to people's houses, their stand mixers are always up on the counter and I would not like that. My counter has things that I use constantly. I have my toaster because I feel like we have toast all the time. My wind spoons, my spindles, I have my cutting board. Over here is like coffee stuff and some knives. But I like having appliances that even if I use them every single day, I can still store them away because it opens up our counter space and puts honestly our really good storage to use. I just would not want another item chilling out on my counter. I just wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> So that, again, that is just personal preference, just like all these things. This isn't to say if you have any of these things, it's bad, but this is just my explanation on why I don't have them. And usually there's an alternative or 100%, I just don't have anything to do with it. Oh, plastic storage for leftovers. Like when you have hot leftovers and you need to put them in a container, I do not have plastic containers. I have glass containers. I had plastic ones for years because they were gifted to me when I first got married. There are a lot of reasons why plastic containers shouldn't be like your go-to storage for food, particularly hot food. And honestly, I have used my blender that is like a plastic and I have blended up things that are warm. So like, I'm not perfect at this, but something I do really wanna focus in on is when I have hot leftovers and they need to go somewhere and sit there for a long time, it needs to be in glass. Glass is not as porous as plastic and does not contain things that are easily seeped into the food as plastic contains. <laughs> 50. I do have silicone like a uh, stasher bags that are awesome. I do have some bamboo um, storage as well, but those things I don't put hot stuff into. Let me just say, if you want this quick sourdough burger bun recipe, I will link that video below. Okay, what else? I don't have little rarely used items, maybe like little gimmicky items. Or you could even say like, you know those um, corn on the cob holders? I don't th have things like that. Or napkin holders, I don't have things like that. Um, coasters, there's just certain kind of little things I don't have. It's the little things that clutter like crazy and take up the most space. And there's so many of those things that we just do without. Um, there are places in our house where I'm like, man, it would be nice to have a coaster here, but we can use a book or we just put our glass somewhere that it won't uh, tint or bother the surface. It's the little things that are like, just, they're crazy to me. They're easy to lose, they're easy to 
uh, misplaced and they're hard to store and unless it's something that I'm like man I'm using this constantly um, I don't have I don't have teeny tiny little things in my kitchen the smallest things I have are toothpicks which are small and even that's still a stretch for me but I can use them for wrapping and shaping certain things again I use them. Lastly, and this was huge for me uh, when it comes to just a clearer countertop space. There are no paper towel holders or spice racks or dish drying racks or you know those things where like you even see it on Instagram where you see like those really cool videos of people uh, with cool sink storage and stuff like none of that. None of that type of storage. Same with like honestly. I store our sandwich bags and Ziploc bags in the container the Ziplocs came in. And I'm think I think this is an old container. I think I just keep reusing it. But yeah, just none of that extra kind of maybe storage necessity and particularly on the kitchen counter. Because when it's there, that's when it feels cluttered. And uh, especially with paper towel, I did not use paper towel for seven years because I was like, I just can't have a paper towel holder on my counter. And then I realized I don't have to put paper towel on my counter and I can actually put it into this perfect little spot that I can get to and it's great and it's less clutter and less to clean and just to see and take in on my counter. But any sort of just holders and stuff like that, they're not on my counter. Um, I also don't really have them anywhere else. I do have this as my spice rack. This is beautiful. It's built like into the kitchen. That's bougie. That is so bougie for me. And previous to this house, I've always had a spice rack, but I've really tried, or a spice bin, I've really tried to keep it away and not have it on the counter itself. Counter clutter. Can you tell it's counter clutter that drives me crazy? Because the thing is, especially with minimalism, if it's here, it's in here. And that's what can really bother me. Okay. I need to get this going in my bread machine. But I wanna thank you guys for watching today's video. There are more things in my kitchen that honestly I do not own, but those were kind of the main and the specifics I could think of. Let me know in a comment down below if there's anything you relate to, or um, maybe there's some things you see in my kitchen that you don't have. Let's start chatting in the comments and I'll see you guys in my next video. And if you haven't seen my previous video where I show things that I don't buy at the store and instead make from home, I will have that linked in the next slide.